And Graham Allison had debates with Chinese scholars, and he comes over as a person who's very sincerely interested in avoiding war, which is good, which is what Chinese people want to do. But I became concerned that it was taken seriously in China, perhaps even more concerned that it was taken seriously in the United States of America, because what he essentially argues is that war between China and America is inevitable. That's not merely a pessimistic message, but I think it's a very dangerous message, because if you think war is inevitable, then all you can do is fight it. There's no alternative peaceful way. But second, it has the effect, because of the reasoning he offers, of putting the blame on China for the tension. But in, in a subtle way, many anti-Chinese commentators in the West say that we don't like China because China has done something which we judge as morally wrong. Now, there's a lot of questions you can ask about the moral standard of a nation that was built on slavery. But anyway, they, they seem to think that they have the right to... Um, to judge what everybody else does. But Graham Allison doesn't say that China's doing anything wrong. What he says is the problem is that China is growing. So almost, and I think this is the reason for the interest of, 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 Western, of Chinese scholars, he says the problem is China is doing too well, that China's rise is a threat to America's world position. And he makes a historical analogy, and this is where Thucydides comes in. He talks about ancient Greece in the 5th century before, before Christ, which is 2,500 years ago. And he says there was a very famous war called the Peloponnesian War. And this war was fought on Greek territory. Now, in fact, I'm going to suggest that that's the first historical error he makes. It wasn't fought on Greek territory. It was fought in the Mediterranean. But this was because the dominant power in, in, in Greece was, was Sparta. And Athens was a rising power. It wasn't as strong as Sparta, but it became quite wealthy quite rapidly. And this was perceived as a threat by Sparta. Now, the famous historian that everybody refers to when they want to talk about what happened in that war is a man called Thucydides. And Thucydides was, he's, many people think of him, at least in the West, as the father of modern history. He's the first person to actually record, attempt to record historical facts as accurately as he could to give a narrative which wasn't just a story, wasn't just like Homer, who, who is, is wonderful to read, but um, is essentially just saying, you know, this, this is the legend. He's saying, I'm attempting to ascertain what really happened. And he was himself a general, so he was involved in the war. So a lot of the incidents he was talking about, he knew because he was there. Thucydides is, is very widely trusted as a source. He had a history of the Peloponnesian War. He makes one remark where he says, once Athens began to rise, war between Athens and Sparta was inevitable. Then he makes an analogy. He says, everywhere you get a dominant power and there is a rising power, there will be a great power conflict between the rising power and the um, previously dominant power. Therefore, he then extrapolates and says, China and the USA are like Athens and Sparta. Now, I'm very concerned because particularly finding this was taken very seriously by a number of, uh, of Chinese scholars. And it's first of all, it's not true, even if you forget the, the history. If you just look at the causes of the China-US conflict, it's, it's, it's just demonstrably not true. The reason is not China's rise. The reason is America's decline. Thank <laughs> you.